What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna learn about writing better control flow and conditionality in your Swift code. Before we jump into things, hit that like button down below, say hello in the YouTube comments, hit subscribe while you're at it if you are into iOS and wanna stick around. Let's open up Xcode and jump into things. So we're gonna work in a playground today. So let me create a new blank playground here. And we're gonna call this better conditionals and hopefully I spelled that right and I'll toss it onto my desktop as well as expand our Xcode window here to give ourselves a little more room to work and I'll bump that font size as well. So as an example, what I will do here is I'm gonna create a class and what we will do is we'll call this uh, address processor. Or maybe what we'll do actually is we will call this a credit card validator. Let's use a credit card example just because it popped into my head all of two seconds ago. All right, we're gonna create an initializer on here and let's think about the properties we need for a credit card validator. Well, we need the card number, which is a string optional. We will need a few other things like the expiration month. We can actually probably just call this number instead of card number. We'll want a expiration year. We're gonna want a security code. And there's a couple other things on the card too, if you think about it, like the user's first name and last name, otherwise known as surname. But we'll stick with this. There's some other things sometimes that um, certain credit cards have, like the zip code or postal code associated with it. But I digress, this is enough for our example. So let's say we have a function on here, and this function is process. All right, awesome. So what I wanna do is, let me actually call this validate. What I wanna do is before I validate that this card you know, is quote unquote valid, we need to unwrap all this stuff. So what you might be inclined to do is something like the following. You might say, well, if let um, number equals number, that's pretty good. And then if let uh, expiration month equals expiration month equals expiration month. And let me actually copy and paste this a few times because as you can see up here, we have a total of uh, six properties, I think. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And let's just get all of these updated because they shouldn't, of course, be the same. So year, year, and then we'll have our security code be the next one. So security code security code, this one will be first name as first name, and finally, last name as last name. So what is wrong with this code? Well, in fact, absolutely nothing is wrong with this code. Um, the problem is it's kind of ugly and it becomes a little difficult to read, right? Let's put validating in here as a example. Now, keep in mind, in this case, we haven't really done any of the else cases. So let's start adding else cases, because presumably we want to also either throw an error or handle um, when something goes wrong, right? Let the user know via a alert or something of that nature that, hey, you need to enter a name or a card number or security code, so on and so forth. This is getting ridiculous, as you can see, like right off the bat. So instead of using, uh, you know, if lets, otherwise binding and unwrapping your optionals here, or any type of conditional statement for that matter, what we can translate this into is the following. So let me take this process or validate function that I keep calling process, and let's create a variant that is a better validation. So I'll say better validate, and what I'll do is I will unwrap all of these instead of with if statements, we're gonna use guard statements. So we'll say, hey, if number is number, else we want to do something, you know, we have to throw or handle the error, and let's do it this way. So we'll say like that, two, three, four, and five. Of course, you would want to go and update these. So we have our number, we have our security code, which is security code. We have expiration month, which is expiration month. And perhaps we can even combine the expiration month and year if we want it to be a composite error handled. So here we can say expiration year. Let's try that again. Expiration year is expiration year. And finally down here, we can also probably combine the user's name as well. So their first name and 
their last name as last name. So let's take a look at this code and compare it with uh, the code up above. So we have some warnings here that uh, we are not using these immutable types that we have created as a result of unwrapping our optional properties up here. But let's just look at this. Visually, far easier to read and understand. Also, not a gigantic pyramid, which albeit looks cool, but trust me that it becomes a total mess to handle uh, as your logic gets more and more complex. And it's just far easier to write. It's easier to comma separate, you know, multiple cases into a single guard. One thing that I will caution and point out is your logic becomes um, a little backwards here. So guards are the inverse of an if. So in this case, we're saying if a number is a number, aka it's non-nil, non-optional, do all this jazz, else do this. Here, what we're saying is, hey, if, you know, guard let the number is a number, and then continue down, right? So don't go into the else. The else is similar as the else up here, but the way that you would read the statement is slightly nuanced. Instead of going into the block, you're going further down below. And this is a fairly simple topic in the world of Swift and a lot of functional programming languages like even JavaScript or Kotlin, but it doesn't really get uh, the attention it deserves. It's actually far nicer than the days of you know, even the current days of writing if else, if else, if else, whether it's in Python, whether it's in Java, God forbid, Objective-C. So, you know, definitely an awesome tip to incorporate into your projects. Let me know if this is something you do already in the comments down below. That's all I've got for you guys in today's video. Hit that like button as usual. It helps out a lot. Subscribe, share the channel, connect on LinkedIn, follow on Twitter, all the socials. Appreciate y'all watching and supporting. I will see you guys in the next video.